was that was an unreal one. Those aren't even Mariners colors though. Those are literally Angels colors. Eh, like I guess, but you can steal colors. It's like the NBA. The NBA loves stealing colors. All right, we're back on YouTube, by the way. So that's awesome. You can check us out now on multiple platforms. Uh, question here. What do you guys do for jobs? I do work in radio right now. Um, I work down in Corvallis. Thank you, Brandon, by the way, for the question. So I do work in radio uh, covering Oregon State Athletics. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I do. I talk into a microphone and multiple different platforms. So I have this. I can cuss on this. I can't cuss on the radio. So I have a. I need a bounce. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in Oregon State sports, you can listen to listen to the flagship station down there. TJ hosts pretty regularly, and he's out and about doing a bunch of different stuff for the for the radio station down there. And he covers Oregon State sports, so it's cool. What do I do for a job? Well. I've done a flurry of different things. I mean, we're both in sports media. We both went to school for sports media. I would say I'm looking for my next thing right now. But like I've called a season of minor league baseball, like doing play by play. Um, so like that was the big thing I did when we got out of college. And that's always the route I thought I wanted to go. And um, so I did that. And now I'm trying to focus on finding a job kind of in the space that we're using this podcast to do right now is like something in kind of new age sports media with podcasting, with social media content, with things like that. So like, like ideally we want to take this podcast as far as we can possibly take it. But along with that, um, yeah, like, like the goal is to find something in this kind of sphere of media. So that's the goal. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, Oh, here's another one. Uh, C town Patriot on Instagram says get to the ballpark at 5 PM for happy hour. Well, they do have good happy hour specials. Is that part of those? Um, no, I was going to say you can get value beers, but you can get those throughout the game, right? Yeah, you can. So the pen does, uh, I forget how much off beer, like two hours before the game. It's like the first 30 minutes when, when the gates open, but sh I mean, shout out to the Mariners, dude, they dropped beer prices. That never happens. That never happens in today's economy. That literally never happens. And they came out this week and said, the price of beer is going down 50 cents. That's amazing. You guys can trash them all you want, but I, I swear at least 50% of you only show up to the ballpark to drink beer. And that's totally fine. And they made it cheaper to do that. Isn't that incredible? You're you're kind of trashing on our listener, like on I'm our not. fan base here. I think, I think tell me people don't like besides watching baseball, people like sitting down in the seat and, and drinking beer. Am I like chat? Am I right? I feel like I'm right. Okay, sure. I'm saying that like, I think the people that listen to us are actually interested in baseball. I'm sure that's a, an additional plus of going to the game, but I don't think that's the only reason most of the people that listen to us are showing up to games. I think most that's of the people probably like watching baseball. Let's say both. Okay. I'll say both. All right. I, I think everybody, even if they really enjoy watching baseball, also enjoy the fact that beer is cheaper. Yeah. I mean, that's that's fair. And because and what do they drop it down to? Five bucks now? It was the, uh, all like a handful of them are 50 cents cheaper. So they went down from six to 550 or five to 450. So that's mm -hmm. it's pretty good. I Again, like you never. Uh, hey, shout out Saucedo. Nice to have you in here, bud. Oh, what's up, um, Sauce? Nice, to, nice to see you. Hope, hope you're uh, enjoying the last day in Arizona. Um, but yeah, like again, like first of all, the value beer is the best thing in like across any sport. I would say food deal, and the fact they made it more affordable for everybody else is amazing. Like it truly is for the amount of flack the people up top get. That might be one of their best moves they've had. Yeah. Are those are those just the value beers that went down or is that everything? Cause I feel like the, the bigger ones are still expensive. Just the value ones. I think. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's still a good deal. Like you said, it went down to like five bucks. I, I don't know where you're going to get cheaper drinks than that at a baseball game. So, okay. Like somebody just commented, wow, 50 cents. What a deal. I'm just saying like, go to any other ballpark and see if you can find cheaper prices. I don't think there is. Dude, I paid $18 for a beer at city field. $18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at at T-Mobile Park, you can now buy two beers for under ten dollars and get the same amount of liquid. Like, wow. let me put that in perspective that way. Oh, welcome what to those tall boys. Those tall boys are like just under twenty ounces, and now at T-Mobile Park, you can buy twenty four for like nine bucks. 
Well, I was going to say $18 at City Field. Like, welcome to New York City. What do you expect? Well, Seattle's not that much cheaper <laughs> these days. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, but yeah, I mean, like that's a plus of opening day, right? Somebody just said, um, oh, J-Rod squad seats are $44 now. Well, I don't. is that for opening day or is that for just period? Um, I, I, I would guess that's for opening day. I'd have a hard time believing those are like midweek. Oh, what's up, Hyphen? Hyphen in the house too, Ryan Roland Smith. Um, but the I would imagine those are opening day. Actually, opening day, yeah. they might be more than that. But I have a hard time believing like a Tuesday game against the A's is forty four dollars in the J Rod squad. Yeah, probably not. Oh, speaking of which, may, for for those saying, oh, like talking about the drinks, if you want to find cheaper drinks at a ballpark somewhere else, like you could try to go to the Coliseum. Maybe they're cheaper there. But do you really want to watch a game at O.co? Like I went once, and let me tell you what, I'm never going back. I, I went once to get it off my bucket list of 30 ballparks. That's the last time I'm ever stepping foot in that stadium, barring some unforeseen circumstance. Let's take a peek at some things we have here on YouTube. This Mariners team feels like it's going to be way more consistent. Spring training's not a perfect, it's not a perfect evaluator because there, there's a Ray, Luke Rayleigh question in there too. And I don't think people can be really overreacting too much to how Luke Rayleigh has performed this spring. He hasn't been very good, but it does feel like watching this team and watching this lineup and, and talking yourself through one through nine, there's just so many, there's less questions at, at every single spot. Yeah. And Rayleigh should be one of the guys you're, you're not worried about. This is a guy that was 30% above league average as a hitter last year. He had a great first half. Second half was, you know, a little bit up and down, but to his credit, look at what he's done the last week or so in spring training. Like he started to get his timing down today. He had a couple of hits. Like he looked really good and he's doing it at the perfect time. Because if you're going to get hot at a certain point, do it right as spring training's ending and you're heading into opening day. So yeah, like that's what I'd say about Rayleigh. And then in terms of the rest of the lineup, like everybody is hitting. Everybody in this lineup right now is just crushing the ball. And we'll see again how that translates over from the end of spring training to the start of the season. But I mean, there's a lot of guys that I'm watching and saying, this feels real. Like, dude, if, if Mitch Hanniger stays healthy, this feel like, like he's not going to OPS 1400 all year, but what he's doing in spring feels like it can absolutely translate over to the regular season because we know when he's healthy, which it wasn't that long ago when he was in 2021 and had a great year. Like we know what healthy Mitch Hanniger can do see what else we got here and then like right along with that and a big reason why people are are, are so excited i mean our guy dom continuing yeah. this week to mash it might get to the point eventually where he is going to hit against both lefties and righties mm -hmm. because i th i'm going to guess they believe that that's the kind of guy he is that that is the result they're looking for of him mm -hmm. being an every everyday hitter with the ability to go against against both sides of the plate and he's kind of shown it. he's got to show it over a, a 162 games. This is a small sample in spring training against some guys who probably won't make a big league roster, but man, I, like he's showing you everything you need right now. And For like sure. we detailed it in the last couple of weeks on the pod about, you know, his, his stance change and just trying to get more efficient and man, it's working. And we talked about too, that at the end of 2023, the Mariners had a decision to make saying, okay, do we want to move forward in, in some capacity or another with Jared Kelnick or with Dom Canzone? And again, there's there's probably a lot of reasons that Kelnick ended up getting traded. We've talked about that throughout the winter. But if you want to add another, maybe they felt like Canzone had a better chance long term to figure out hitting lefties. We've seen it so far this spring for a guy that can potentially hit both sides, you know, both sides of the mound, can hit lefties and righties pitching wise. Like we've seen it. We've seen it all spring. Now, we'll see how it translates over to the regular season. And again, that's going to be a big talking point probably throughout this live stream of who transfers it over. But like the adjustments he made look very smooth. And it looks like, I mean, I said it on the last podcast. I'll say it here again. I wouldn't be shocked in any way to see Dom end the year with about 25 homers. Like not at all. This is when Mitch Hanniger broke out when he was about 26 years old too in his first full season with the Mariners. Why can't Dom do the same thing? I think he will. Let's see. Want me to keep scrolling through Instagram or YouTube? Yeah, find us something. Okay. Um, well, we've got people talking about, yeah, I want to see Canzone get the everyday job. You know, the people are giving us the the uh, Italian emoji. So it sounds like, as we know, Dom Canzone is a very, very popular pick 
to kind of break out here in year in year two, I guess, with the Mariners, but his first full year. So, um, so yeah, that's a popular one. Aaron Rivers on YouTube says 50-50 season for Julio. Book it. Okay. That would be cool. Limit might be a little stretch. Julio might be about five years away from 50 home runs, potentially. I feel like he's got he, he could do it, but, uh, you, you know, I mean, five cool, years okay, a lot. But, but I'm saying it in the sense of like the peak of somebody's hitting career is usually from ages 28 to 32 about give or take depending on the person, but generally that's when you're going to peak. So if he's going to really like, truly peak and hit 50, 50 bombs, that would be the most likely stretch. But if he's going to, if we're talking about the 50, 50, I don't know if he's stealing 50 bags at 30, 31 years old. So if he's going to go 50, 50, it's got to be here in the next couple of years. The thing with the thing with me with Julio is I'm just not going to put any type of expectations on what he could do in year three. The guy comes in fourth in the MVP voting says he's unsatisfied. He's hungry for more. He like worked his tail off all off season. He talked about like, you know, I mean, he, and he talked about, he even ramped it up this winter a little bit. I wouldn't put any capper on what he could do this year. Could he go 40, 40? Absolutely. Could he go 50, 50? Look, I'm not going to tell him no. Like if I had to bet on it, maybe I'd say closer to 40, 40 could be more realistic. And I do think that's possible this year, but again, I wouldn't set any expectations on that guy. Another question. How does Ryan bliss not make the opening day roster? Very consistent in AAA last year and plead his case during the spring. Well, because Dylan Moore exists, Lyle. That's why. My guy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I, see, you know what I was thinking about? And I'll talk about this on probably upcoming podcasts too. But while we're here on live, I'm going to talk about it here on live. So I'm a huge Dylan Moore fan, but I feel like I did a bad job leaning into it last year in our, I guess, inaugural year of the podcast. Like, I need to have much more of an online presence, I feel like, just raving about Dylan Moore and hyping him up every chance he does something good. So this year, one of my little resolutions for the season is make it very, very apparent that I'm on, like, I'm Dylan Moore's potentially number one hype man. So uh, I will be doing that this this upcoming year. But the Ryan Bliss question, I think it more has to do with they have a platoon at third base that they're ready to roll with on opening day. Jorge Polanco is going to be locked in at second base for a while. Also, like, Bliss hasn't played any third base and in college and the minors, that would probably be the one spot if he was going to make the roster that he could get a shot at, but he doesn't really play much third base. He's mostly a second baseman. So I think he'll get up at some point in the year, almost for sure. But I understand why I didn't make it on opening day because the roster felt fairly set in stone from the position player side for a while now. Jerry playing 40 chess law while Otani gets suspended for gambling. Yeah, Ugh. Jerry Jerry could see into the future. Jerry, so we we said how how remarkable of a job Jerry and Justin Hollander did in the offseason. Can, can we say they went as far and to do a background check on ePay before they <coughs> declined to offer Otani any money? Uh, I'm I'm going to say that's not why they didn't sign him. I'm just going to go out Man, on, is this on guy a guy actually in in the in the UC Riverside database. Let's take a look at it. I I will say like we had a friend in our in our group of friends send a send a tweet today saying like it quote tweeted the like one of the national accounts saying Shohei Otani to address the media tomorrow and somebody quote tweets it saying he's about to give out all his sweet 16 picks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got to give people plenty of time to find a sports book near him. Yeah, I guess. I guess I like there's in all seriousness we talked about it a little bit on Friday's podcast. There's there's so much we still don't know about this story. So I don't know if it's like like we can joke around and I'm I'm fine making jokes about it, but in all seriousness, we probably don't it's not fair to actually firmly put like opinions on the table until we actually have stories about this. This may take a long time to find out what's going on. Like it may go well into the year. So, I don't know if he's going to miss any time. I guess we'll find out. I don't think so, at least as of now, but uh yeah, uh Listen, to, to the Jerry playing 40 chess thing, either you're referencing they dodged a bullet, not not spending the money, or the whole clause in the contract personnel change thing, he opts out and then says, you know what? Maybe I do want to go to Seattle. Mm. Yeah. That's it. It's an interesting point. Yeah. You know, dude, you know, sports gambling technically is illegal mobily here too, just like California. So 
you excuse me you could nice. uh find a find an interpreter who can't who won't go to another state and gamble far away from another state too or isolated up here it's a long someone, drive to, it's a long yeah. drive to go to another state someone someone just said pete rose is an interpreter away from the hall of fame in our comments <laughs> just need someone I mean, to take a fall for him i guess oh hi marcus some he just said what's up too He's in, he's in here. So um, I'm just scrolling through some more Instagram comments. Oh, somebody said, oh, this is Seattle easy again. I'm interested in the new crab pizza. So I'm going to be totally honest about this one. Those do not sound like a combination of things that are enticing. I can be wrong. Maybe other, maybe there's other people that feel differently. Maybe you feel differently. Crabs and pizza. I don't know. Yeah. Like, like what, like what's wrong with I only eat sushi. Sushi is the only, only sort of seafood I eat. Even if oh, it's I, crab, but if you're gonna put crab on like cheese and pizza sauce, I f I forgot you're you're not a seafood person. Um, yeah, like what's wrong with a pepperoni pizza? You can just get a pepperoni pizza or pepperoni and sausage or whatever else they have. Like you're take you're going out on a real limb putting crab on pizza. So look, shout out to the Mariners for getting creative with some of their their ideas for in stadium food. I just don't know if that's the one I'm getting in line for and paying the money for and eating. I may. I may venture to some other avenues. Like, is there? Oh yeah. Okay. I'll keep scrolling. Is there like, did like, have you ate eaten or tried seafood in the last, I don't know, five years? Like, have you eaten salmon? I don't know. Me? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I've have tried, tried it. And just not a fan. Texture is not very good. Okay. I don't know if that's a cold take or not, but the texture is not very good. All right. Fair enough. Um, this what is the same. Li your brother oh. what about a limousine and a pizza? Uh, does does that mean crab pizza? No. Did, wait, did you just say that's my brother that said that? Yeah. That's that's a reference. I missed it out on the inside joke, aren't I? Um, that's a reference from from Home Alone too. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, somebody just said this is the same organization that sells grasshoppers. Well, yeah. So you can put those on pizza too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about all that one. Miss, miss me with that. Grasshoppers on pizza. Would you eat grasshoppers on pizza before you eat crab on pizza? I would starve. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me scroll up a little bit while you look on YouTube. Um, Am I going to be at a Beaver baseball game soon? Maybe in two weeks, Mitchell commenting on YouTube, perhaps in a couple of weeks. Did not go this weekend. Weather wasn't great, but maybe uh, in a couple of weeks. Have you uh, have you been at games yet? No. No. So you have not gotten out to watch 2024 Travis Pizzana yet? No. Uh, if Jerry could find a way to trade up, I'd have significantly more interest. It's be Fair. pretty good. Jerry's going to find a way to circumvent his way up into the top two top two or three, or maybe number one. I don't know how it's possible. I don't know what rules he's going to have to break to do that, but it's the only chance. Are, are we ever going to get to the point in baseball where they're going to start trading draft picks? Like, I feel like, yes, but like, like, like actual draft picks. I'm not talking about comp picks. I mean like the actual picks. I hope maybe? so. I think that'd be a great idea. Like that would be, a, that would like, could you think of how much more interesting the major league baseball draft would be? If they oh, could do way that? more. Way more, way more interesting, and it would make trades more interesting. Like, like what would what would premier guys on the market, like big league guys, all of a sudden be worth in trades? Like, if let's let's throw a Luis Robert out there because I would assume at some point he is going to get traded. I don't know if it's going to be this year. I don't know if it's going to be next year. I would highly doubt the White Sox either extend him again or he stays with the team until free agency. So if he gets traded and draft picks were allowed to be traded, like what is that worth? Like, would he be worth just a few first, like, could he be worth two to three first round picks? Or is it still more like you need actual big league guys in return, or you need high end prospects in return and some picks? It would probably still be a mix because you'd probably still want guys closer to the big leagues. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you're the White Sox, yeah, because you you need to like you need to replenish that farm as much as you can for as long as you can. <laughs> now, what do we get? <laughs> trade Jared for a fourth rounder and a bag of chips. What do we think that trade value? Who, that uh, trade who? Jared. Oh, uh, no, 
That's still my guy. Sorry. Well, I know some would probably argue that's better than the return they got. Why don't we like I see? Why don't we see where Cole Phillips is at in a few years before? Oh, we brewing? could. Yeah, but you know, people they don't want to wait a few years. Sure. Yeah. Somebody says in reply to that, we'd be we giving up too much. Yeah. You know, respectfully, I'm going to disagree. Because, listen, he may be on the Braves, but I'm always going to be a Kalnick fan. And somebody just said, how's he doing in spring? You know what? Last couple games, he's figuring it out. What do you, like, what's the reaction from fans going to be when Atlanta comes to town in late April and, like, that first at bat? Like, are people are people going to boo? Because, like, he didn't leave in free agency. He got traded. I think he's going to get booed. If I want to predict. Really? I mean. It's just like, just so think of the casual fan prospect underperforms, like clearly had disdain for the organization and then left. Like, even if it wasn't his own choice. I'm, I'm very interested to see, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't expect him to get cheered or anything, but I, I don't know if it's just going to kind of be like silent. Like it's any other batter coming up or if, if he's, if he's really going to, you know, here's some boobers. I, I I have no idea. I guess I'd lean toward more what you're saying. It's um, it's there's probably a chance he does, but I don't know. I'd be interested to be at that game to see what the reaction is going to be like. Well, Steven uh, on Instagram, I'm not sure if he's really a punk. He's just probably wired differently than a lot of us and, and very focused, but obviously wasn't a very good chemistry match with well, with where the Mariners were at in the organization and, you know, they also didn't treat him very well. Like, let's be frank. The Mariners did not do Jared any benefit by essentially rushing him to the big leagues, even though everyone thought he was ready. He was clearly not ready at that point. And they did him a disservice by yanking him up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And that's difficult for any prospect yeah. to like, to, like those to, to fight through. Yeah. Like, like the six games he played in triple a after a full season where he missed you know, the season was canceled for COVID. And then the month he had in Arizona because he didn't make the big league roster where he was just facing low end prospects before the minor league season started. Cause remember in 2021, the minor league season was a month delayed. So he like, like it had basically been since 2019, it had been almost a year and a half since he faced real pitching. And then after six games in Tacoma, they were like, well, let's just yank him up. And yeah, that did not do him any favors. So so yeah, what did somebody else just gonna miss sing, singing country roads? Yes, like I think everybody will. Oh, this one I agree with. Steve on Instagram says Suarez will get a standing ovation. Yes, yes he 100%. will. Yes he will. You like for for yeah I agree with that. For only being here two years, people loved him and he did a lot when he was here. So he deserves a standing ovation when he's here. He does. You know somebody made this point the other day. Now when we're on the Diamondbacks topic. Now, let me finish what I'm going to say here before anybody jumps in. What is the Paul Seawald reaction going to be like? Now, before everybody says, of course he's going to get cheered. Of course he's going to get cheered. Like, yes, he deserves it. The thing I'm getting at here is Paul Seawald, if he's going to come in, is likely going to come in in some one-run game in the ninth inning where the Diamondbacks may be up a run or maybe it's tied. So are the Mariners going to cheer when they're down a run and they know they need, like fans going to cheer down a run. They know they need to score to win the game when he comes in. Now, if Seawall came in when the Mariners were up a bunch of runs or down a bunch of runs and he just needed to get some work, oh, we'd get a huge ovation. Will he get cheered in a tie game or a close game where the Mariners need runs? I don't know. Yes, I think he still would. Okay. Probably. I was just, I was just throwing that question out there. I think a lot of people relate to Paul Seawald. That yeah. Helps. For sure. Like, again, like he's very, he's, he's a very transparent guy. Like he let us like showed his emotions on the field when he'd succeed. Yeah. He's very relatable. If that's what you mean, like in that and way, he's clearly loved by everybody in the club. Yeah. Too. I, mean, oh, you yeah. Can, I mean, you can tell you can, you can really, I mean, Seawald still went golfing in the off season with all, all the Mariners. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. He said, he's, he said a bunch of these guys are, are now my best friends. So yeah, like very relatable. Well, Mitchell on YouTube says won't get cheer because the M's want to win. It'll be a pregame thing, but uh, like Paul's not going to get a pregame thing. I don't think not when the diamondbacks are in town, like Seawald was great, but you know, I feel like a pregame honoring of a, of a player is like a Mariners hall of fame caliber player who left. Like if Kyle Seeger played in the 2022 season, then he would get a standing out. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if Seawald was quite here long enough to, to get that. Now, look, if the Mariners orchestrate something where they let him walk out onto the field pregame 
so everybody can give them an ovation. I think that'd be awesome. I just don't know if they decide to act on that or not. I don't know if they'll they'll think to themselves, he was here long enough to have us do that. Kind of like TJ was saying. Again, if they do it, I think he deserves all the praise in the world and he should get it. I just don't know if that's going to be set up or not. I don't know. Here's a hot take, Lyle. Can't wait till Wyatt Langford is Kelnick 2.0. You know, Oof. I, that's a, that is a hot take because even as a Mariner fan, I have a hard time seeing that. Yeah, this guy, like, how did this guy fall to a fourth pick? That's all I'm going to say. Like, like, what were the well, Tigers doing at that third pick? Job? Joe went third, right? No, that was a different draft. It was Max Clark. Okay. Um, Job was like 2021, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, Wyatt Langford's a little different than Kelnick for those who don't know. So I guess if anybody doesn't know him, he's going to be a rookie with the Texas Rangers this year. Just one year ago, he was the number four pick in the draft, right-handed bat outfielder out of Florida who had a very lucrative college career has torn it up in the minors in his very short time, made the opening day rosters out of spring training with the Rangers already this year and is a lot of people's pick to win Rookie of the Year, especially with Jackson Holiday not starting the year on the Orioles roster. So, listen, for the sake of the Mariners, I hope Wyatt Langford's not that good, but unfortunately, they may have two cornerstone outfielders for a while with him and Evan Carter. Yeah, like 15 years worth at so. least. Say that again? <sighs> yeah, 15 years at least. 15 years. 15. Could it be? A cornerstone? Well, that's 15 years is a long time. What about free agency for those guys? Okay, let's let's okay, we'll go at least six. That seems that's guaranteed. Yeah. One well, one of them might be there 15 years if they pan out. That's true. And you've got Adolis Garcia still out there. So yeah, that like I, I hope. The Rangers lineup for for as little as they did in free agency, which hasn't gotten talked about much. Like like they these guys legitimately did nothing all winter. But and, and like I think there's questions in that rotation. I think there's questions in that bullpen. That's for sure. It's some of the same questions they had last year. But if you look at that lineup, that's a tough out. Like you look one through nine, there is there is no freebie in that lineup, especially with Langford now up and Carter getting his first full year. Do you guys have opinions on the last few roster spots? I don't feel like the roster really is as much in question for opening day since everyone's healthy. And I mean, you could kind of feel it going into spring what the roster would be, right? Yeah, I'm going to guess what they mean is the last couple of bullpen spots. I think like everybody knows the rotation is set. Those five have been set in stone forever. The position players, the 13 guys feel pretty set in stone too, because here's your bench guys, right? The other side of the outfield platoon. So let's say it's a right-handed pitcher that day. Mitch would be on the bench. That would put Arias on the bench because that's the side of the third base platoon that wouldn't be playing. You have Sebi Zavala because you have to have a backup catcher. So he's another. And then it's probably Dylan Moore, who's your utility guy. So the position players feel fa fairly set. I would say the only like questions about the opening day, opening day roster right now is who's going to be in the bullpen. And though there are two spots out there that are kind of up for grabs right now. And it seems like from what's been talked about, it's likely going to be Cody Bolton and Colin Snyder. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, it seems about right. Like I, this feels like, yeah, go ahead. Well, I guess Tyson Miller still has a chance, but it just seems like they're starting to lean toward, um, Snyder and Bolton with the other six again, because Brash and Munoz are going to start on the IL. If those guys weren't on the IL, this would be different, but the six guys to start the year that are basically locked into the bullpen, it's going to be um, Munoz, Stanek. It's going to be the two lefties in Spire and Saucedo. It's going to be Trent Thornton and it's going to be Austin both. Like he's going to serve as the long reliever. And then there's two spots kind of open right now. I would, it seems like those two spots are going to be Bolton and Snyder. Now, here's another good question. Where has the lineup improved for this season? Now, I, I have my answer. It is certainly improved. I'm almost certain that they're going to be better in both of those positions. You could argue, because Julio himself said he had a down year, that you're going to get better in center field as well. If you want to go on a technicality, they are better at second base, 
Uh, you would hope they're better at first base. That's still to be determined, but all the signs are showing that they're going to be better at uh, better at first base. JP probably will regress a little bit this year, so it won't be shortstop. As of right now, pro- like third base is, as of right now, probably a wash. Cal, prob- behind the plate, probably a wash at the same point. So I think, the, any any holes you want to poke in that? Uh, in terms of what's been improved or the only the positions you've read off so far? In in terms of well, like what's what's been improved in the lineup? Second base and DH? Yep. Like I'm surprised you didn't start with that. Oh, and DH, yeah, I forgot. Well, like you're talking about two positions that since Cano left and since Nelson Cruz left have been rotating constantly, like a lot. Now you've got two guys, like look at the way Jorge Polanco's hit this spring. That is a, like that's a real bat. And he and that's a guy who I think is absolutely going to carry it over as long as he's healthy. You get Mitch Garver into that DH spot every day. You get Jorge Polanco playing second base every day in that lineup. Like this was an 88 win team when they were constantly moving around their DH pieces and their second base pieces last year. Like these are two all star potential bats when they're healthy. That that's where the lineups improved. That's an eight. Like last year, they were an 88 win team without those two guys. What can they be with those two guys this year and the two corner outfield spots you're talking about? Like the, the upside for this lineup, if everybody can stay healthy is, is high. Still a third place team. Well, the cook appreciate your optimism. Still the cook. Yeah. Well, he, he asked the lineup question where they improved. Uh, not an op, not an optimist. But that's fine. You don't have to be optimistic. Well, it's totally and, okay. And here's and here's the other thing too. The Mariners can finish in third place and absolutely make the playoffs. Now, for the record, I think there's a I think there is a world they can actually they can absolutely win the West this year. But if they come in third, they can still get into the playoffs. The AL West is really good with three really good teams. So, like third place doesn't necessarily mean a failed season either. There's still some here. There's still a couple of. There's still a couple of questions coming in on Instagram. We can go, what, a few more minutes? We've been on probably, well, since 7.15 started, a little over 35-ish minutes. Um, yeah. Then we can start to wrap it up. But yeah, like 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 somebody says, Polanco, if he stays healthy, he can carry the team. Yeah, for sure. Like, if you've got JP, Julio, Jorge Polanco, Mitch Garver, Cal Raleigh as your first five, like, that's, that's a very good first five. So, yes. Let's see, anything trickling in here on... I don't know. They just need to beat the Rangers. And more importantly, like not. So the Mariners last season, like they beat the Ranger. No, they, they played a close series against the Rangers. The first time they played, I believe they lost two of three. The first time they played the Rangers, but then just got like bombed the rest of the time. And then lost, had lost the tiebreaker by the time the games actually mattered and rolled around and was part of the reason the Mariners got left out of the playoffs. So more so not get over so overwhelmed early. Would, would probably be a good start, but there's so many, like there's so many reasons to believe the Mariners can stand up to the Rangers this year. Like, first of all, wins and losses, they weren't separated by that much last year. And with the Mariners improved lineup, you would hope that even if the, the Rangers lineup still performs well against the Mariners starters, that the Mariners lineup can then counter and is not overwhelmingly outmatched. Also addition by subtraction, Mitch Garver, like, It's the best example of it. And keep in mind this too. The Mariners were nine and four against the Astros last year. Now they're going to have to beat the Rangers, but they really started to turn the tides playing Houston. Hopefully that carries over the key with the Rangers. Well, it's going to be one of two things. Like you're just going to have to be more efficient and attack them a little bit differently on the mound, or you're going to have to go toe for toe with them offensively at the plate. If they're going to continue to hit the way they hit last year. I think a reason Bryce Miller didn't pitch in that spring training game against the Rangers and they had him throw a sim game instead is they said, like, we don't need Bryce Miller facing the Rangers before the year starts. Don't give him a look at everything he's changed and improved on in the offseason. Like, save it for the season. And I think that was smart. They don't have a scouting report on him now. Like, I mean, okay, they have a scouting report on him because you can have a scouting report on anybody nowadays. But they didn't actually face him toe to toe. And that's going to have to be saved for when they actually play. So I think that is a reason. Hopefully that gives the Mariners a little bit of an edge. But yeah, like like they're going to have to pitch a little bit better against the Rangers, which is tough because they're such a good lineup. But that's a key. 
Yeah, and more importantly, Bryce, like you said, Bryce gets protected in spring training. Those two specifically, Bryce and Brian, are going to have to perform better against the Rangers because when those two faced the Rangers last season, it was game over. Yeah. Okay, Adam, what's up, Adam? Um, I don't know if you met him last year. I mean, he, we, I got to know him being out at the ballpark a little bit last year. Like, big Mariner fan, um, really cool dude. He says, if Garver plays 110 games, I'm buying everybody here a four hundred or $4.50 value size Miller High Life. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you, so Adam, I'm going to give you a heads up here. Mitch Garver, all the times he's been injured, have kind of been a result of him catching. Now that he's going to be a full-time DH, like, he very well can play 110 games. So, uh, if anybody's listening to that, hopefully hopefully they um, they take you up on it and they can screenshot the message and circle back with you when Garver plays 110 games because I think him DHing is going to make a big difference and I think it's going to keep him on the field. So, so yeah, let's, let's, um, let's hope Adam's buying everybody beers. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah. Let's see. Good thing to look for me. I think Dana says that. Uh, I'm flattered. I'll be up there eventually. I don't know when, but I will. Uh, I'll make it a, a good attempt. Trying to convince myself on that for Garver too, Lyle. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great. It would be great. Like again, I, I and I think it's real. He like catching takes such a toll on guys. Like all the more reason. What Cal Raleigh does is so valuable. He catches so many games and takes so many hits throughout the year. Like he gets banged up and it doesn't stop him. Like it, catching is such a grueling position. And at times it it hampered Garver's health throughout his career. But he is a guy that like his best tool is his bat. So if they're going to just let him do that this year. And he's getting three to four bats a game. You know, he runs the bases a little bit. And otherwise, he's just, you know, he's in the dugout. He's not playing the field. I think he can stay on the field. I really do. So let's, um, yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed for that. Uh, let's hear. Let's take a couple more before everything's done. You're looking on YouTube. Oh, Mariners Access says, incredible reporting and interviewing in Peoria this spring. Oh, thanks, man. We appreciate it. Like, yes, yeah, so, I mean, we've talked about it on the podcast a little bit. Spring training was a lot of fun. Like, we had a blast down there in Peoria. We, we did a lot. We talked to a lot of guys. Um, guys were receptive to it all. So yeah, it was it was fun. We've we've got a lot of stuff that's that's kind of banked on our end that we're gonna put out throughout the year. And obviously we're gonna try to get a bunch more during the season too. But um, but yeah, no, it was really fun. Here's a bold prediction. The Mitch's combined for Ooh. 60 homers. I would love that. Uh I you know what? That's a like Okay, he did He did preface this with, it's a bold prediction. I like that bold prediction because you know what? If those two guys actually both stay on the field, that can absolutely happen. So I like that. That's a good bold prediction. What, what do you think? Well, certainly bold. Like, yeah, that would be but, very bold. But if but, they're both like, on the field. Garver hitting 30 home runs himself would be quite the feat for... Well, Garver, Garver hit 30... Uh, Garver hit... I'm just saying he hit 31 in 93 games in Minnesota of all time. Also in a pitcher, yeah, an unfriendly hitter ballpark. So yeah, that's true. Well, I think you and I could have stepped to the plate and hit a 2019 baseball over the fence. I think I you sure you sure about that. You're sounding a little bit 2019 like 19 baseball. You're sounding a little bit like Sauce saying he could take Josh Rojas 475 right now. Like you're going to step in against big league like pitching. 2019 baseball. No, you're like you're not peak baseball swing. You don't think like a, a BP rip you could hit one over the fence. A, like 2019 a, oh, baseball. Uh, do I get a metal bat? Sure. Yeah. May maybe. Are you putting one out? Like you you think you can hit a ball 340 feet? Uh, I think there is a point where I probably could have. All right. I I would like bat, like the middle bat and in BP. I'm not saying I'm going to take like a slider on the outside corner the other way. All right. But you're we telling me I can't like I can't rip a leg kick and just and hit one like down the down the left left field line. Well, I guess it's possible. That being said, like if Garver's on the field for 140 plus games this year. He's like he's always on pace to hit thirty. He just has to stay on the field to do it. I, like it's it's not that crazy. Suggestion from Adam Lyle: Get ready to speak drive line, buddy. Oh, that would kind of be a cool idea. Just like talking it out here. 
I, like, I mean, I don't even know if they let people come in and do that. Probably not. But like, you know, if we were ever to set up something one day where like we got our, uh, you know, our, our, what is it? Like, what do they call those exams that everybody goes through? Like, the, I don't know if they're fitness An tests. evaluation. Yeah. Like, I don't know if they let us do that where they'd let us swing and like they, they put all the, the, the buzzers on our body and all that stuff. Like that, that would be a cool thing to do a YouTube video of at some point if they let us do it. Okay, so your brother's kind of ripping me in the YouTube comments. I'm saying, like, not my current version of myself could not hit a ball out of the ballpark. That I will admit. It's been too long since I've swung a bat. But. Shifting. I think I could have. All right. I think I could have found a way. Okay. 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 Like, like in your best year of high school, like, were you hitting balls over the fence in batting practice? No, no, I wasn't. What? So you're going to do it now when you haven't swung a bat in years? I would say there's a, there's a point taking BP where I, I made the adjustments that I felt like I could have. See, I'm, I'm, I'm just not even, I, see, I'm, I'm smart enough to not put that out there. I am not putting a bet on me hitting a ball out of a major league ballpark, even in 2019 with the juice ball and even with a metal bat. Well, it's fine. Cause again, I just promised the fact that I can't do it right now. So no one's going to have to see me do it. It's the ultimate hypothetical. All right. That's fair. Well, maybe one day, right? Maybe one day you'll, maybe one day there you'll find, um, you'll find a space and whatever job you're in where they do one of those media batting practice things and you'll get to take some hacks. Adam says he'll hammer that I can hit uh, Kellnick spring training numbers during BP. Yeah, baby. Well, that means that means you're hitting bombs. It is. Yeah. yeah. Should see. we find? Well, let's get one more here before we yeah. wrap up. Okay, good call. Uh, Mitchell on YouTube says I can join his OSU I am slow pitch softball team and hit bombs. Oh, Mitchell. We were pretty good softball players in. Uh, in college we were i don't think we were our team wasn't good law was pretty good oh well i had i had a couple over 300 feet what's that you hit balls over 300 feet <laughs> yeah maybe i did and i mean that was <laughs> yeah you did yeah there was i wasn't really expecting it either like again i hadn't swung a bat in a couple years when we started well because we didn't do it we didn't start doing im soft like intramural softball till our junior year or so i didn't know what it was going to be like and then yeah the first the first of that i took i surprised myself because i i guess i just kind of leaned into it and it kind of went flying i was like oh i guess i can i guess i can hit yeah no you hit that ball like no one would know the distance markers we're talking about but i i think you hit it 300 feet like that ball that ball went really far. All right. So, so maybe pat yourself on the back. All right. I'll, I will give myself a pat on the back. And there, there was a couple others like that, but um, is that the last question you want to wrap up with? Or is there like an actual Mariners well, one? You want you to pick one more. Okay. Uh, love the Costco hoodie. Someone said I need a mic before the year. Oh, that means your iPhone mics better than mine. Because again, like I have, I have, that's, that's somebody listening on Instagram. Oh, it's the AirPods. I think newer, newer AirPods. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. So I've had these AirPods for, five years i need new ones and that's probably part of it so um yeah, like we keep talking like this is all work in progress so we're, we're, we're working through some things we got okay it. well we got I, you guys covered i do know that i need new airpods but i guess all the more reason to actually hop on it and get new ones because um because we're doing these now if you listen on youtube i think it sounds normal because i'm this is like you're getting my mic because we're doing it through riverside on youtube we tried to do it through our podcast recording software last week riverside where we were on instagram the problem is we were like like crunched together because it wasn't vertical it was horizontal yeah. so now we're on our phones on instagram our computers for youtube but um yeah i guess the only the um i guess only youtube gets the mic but here let's pick one more let's pick one more mariners question um before we before we wrap it all up hmm yeah people are saying they're happy with 50 home runs between the two of hanniger and and um garver all right, like this one's from Dana, and and this is just about Rojas. Speaking of Rojas, he has looked much improved this spring. You know, this is a guy that hasn't been, like we can have this be our last question, but Josh Rojas hasn't been talked about a lot. 
because everybody's had focus on so many other guys. You've had it on Ty France, you've had it on Canzone, you've had it on Hanniger, you've obviously had it on Julio, like a, a Polanco. But Josh Rojas set a very nice spring. And I think a lot of people forget, not only did he play well once he got over to Seattle last year, 2022, he was a three-war player with the Diamondbacks. Three-war players make the All-Star game. I'm not saying Josh Rojas is locked in to make an all-star game. He's a good player. And I don't think people got to see the best of Josh Rojas last year. I think he was at times very good, but I don't think people have seen the best of him. And I think that's a guy that's flying way under the radar heading into the year. And I want to see, like, first of all, full season Josh Rojas. But second of all, like, he's going to be like a true platoon player this year, we believe. How is he going to be with, like, splitting time equally? Like it, it in theory should benefit him, but like not getting consistent at bats potentially every day can sometimes throw guys off. So that's going to yeah. be something he's going to have to manage. And again, shifting back over to third base and playing a whole lot of time over there, there's a lot more information for Josh to to absorb. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. But if the Mariners get the three and a half prorated version, uh, three win prorated version of Josh Rojas this year. It'd be a pretty good, pretty good idea over there at third base. It would certainly be very productive. And I will say, while he won't be playing as regularly, they're also playing to his strengths, having him in that platoon. Like he's going to face righties a lot more, so I can help him. So yeah, yeah no, that that's a good call on Dana's part. Josh Rojas is a guy that's flown way under the radar, basically all spring, but he's had a very good spring. So yeah, it's exciting, man. Like we're four days out from opening day. You know, I can't wait. I know TJ can't wait. I know all you listening can't wait. Like it has been a long off season. Like we've talked about it is, it is consisted of so many different chapters from like the hope right after the season ended to what they could do moving forward. Like this winter to the negative to then slowly creeping up to the positive, And then it keeps getting more positive and more positive, And then people are refired up because they put together a really good roster. They go through spring training. And now like we can finally watch it for real this Thursday. I cannot wait. It's gonna be exciting. Go, go. So Lyle will be there on Thursday. If you're going to opening day, come find Lyle. You can say hi to him, and then through him, you can also say hi to me as well. He's gonna be my representative yeah. there. I so. I should be there most of the weekend. So for for anybody that's gonna be at games, period, this weekend, even if it's not opening night, let me know. Or, or like I tell anybody, like like always, let me know. Like if, or us know if you're gonna be at games, like tell us. We love to meet up with people. So hopefully, we see a bunch of you guys out at the ballpark this year. Hopefully you're all looking forward to the start of the year like we are. And the next time we're on a live stream next Sunday, we're going to have real games to talk about. We're like, we've done a good job filling time throughout these first couple of live streams, but now we're going to have real games that we can digest and talk about with all of you guys here. And finally, baseball's back. I can't wait. So thank you guys. As always, everybody listening on Instagram, everybody listening on YouTube, you guys are the best. Let's get the season going. Cause I can't wait.